Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm building another welding cart. Probably going to build several more of these actually because I've got welders on the shelf that I need to have be able to move around. And uh, this is part one. I'm going to try to wrap this thing up in two videos. This is how far I am so far. It's kind of an open concept here. It's Structurally it's not very smart because there's no support here, no support here, but uh, the welder I'm going to put on here is an inverter power source. It doesn't weigh much, and I kind of wanted to try one where I kept everything open, where I could reach in, slide machines in sideways, that sort of thing. So let's get into it. I was able to get a hold of some free metal, even though it's kind of rusty, but it's free. And so a little cleanup time and a little cutting time on the chop saw and pretty much ready to start fitting a welding cart together. Inch and a half square tubing, one eighth inch wall. This is a strong hand fixture point table. It's a kind of a light duty table, uh, but it does have it does have a series of holes punched in it that are pretty accurate, and it's really handy for clamping stuff down like this. And one one of the things that are, I've noticed about tables like this, this one and the Build Pro table, is even when you don't need to clamp things down, it's just really easy to get things square, just even eyeballing using the hole pattern. But I'm clamping stuff down because I want to get it all, make sure everything fits. I've got a lot of angles. I want to make sure I'm able to get everything kind of squared up and locked down before I pop some tacks on there. I'm going to tack, tack weld it with a TIG welder today. I want my tacks to be below flush because I'm going to, once I get finished with this piece, I'm going to put the other piece on top of this and just mirror it kind of. And I don't want tacks holding other pieces up. I don't want to have to grind them either. So just really easy to do that and also you can wind up with small tacks really easy to go over with a MIG welder later on. So now that everything is pretty darn square it's time to get a bunch of small tack welds on this thing and I'm going to use a TIG welder to do that with. I like to use a little torch switch for tacking just an on off switch just a really quick way when you're walking around a table to keep from having to drag a foot pedal around with you and if you set the amperage about one amp per one thousandths of thickness or 40 amps per one millimeter, you'll be really close, plenty close enough to get tack welds on something anyway. Even if there's some small gaps in there, as long as you get the filler rod in there quickly, no problem. So now that I've got the first piece tacked up, I'm just taking the second, the second piece, which is just like it, and mirroring it, kind of clamping it, and that way I won't have to worry about or even take the time to get it square. I know it's going to be pretty square if it's just like the other piece. Same thing, I'm getting three or four tacks on each joint. And I'm using a number six gas lens with only about 12 CFH gas just to conserve my argon. I usually, when I'm building a cart or a set of shelves or something like that, I'll put together the, the horizontal pieces, each layer, each shelf or whatever, and then I'll put riser pieces to connect it all and it goes together really well. I'm not sure this is the best way to fabricate anything but since this cart's kind of an open concept and doesn't have uh, you know connecting pieces going up and down I figure I put together the sides first and then tie it all together with these pieces. These are 14 inch long pieces here. I'll, I, there's a little sketch that I made uh, just to have the dimensions on this thing and it'll be at the very end of this video. It's just a really crude sketch on a piece of notebook paper, but it gives you the dimensions and general idea if you want to do something like this. Again, the little torch switch for tacking and walking around the table without having to drag a foot pedal. I just set the machine about one amp per one thousandths of thickness. In this case, 125 amps. 125 thousandths, 3.2 millimeters. You could also say 40 amps per one millimeter. This gets you in the ballpark. This piece needed to pull inward, so I put the tacks on, on there and it pulled it just about right. Now you see these pieces. I actually, if I had it to do over again, I would just put them all the way in the corner where they covered up that other joint, and that would help them stay square during the welding process. I'll explain a little bit of that later. I got this one wrong. I don't know how. I thought I had checked it and double-checked it, but it was out of square. So I'm going ahead and having to cut both 
both ends of it loose, but that's where this grinder comes in handy with a little cutting wheel. And then I'll grind all the tacks off and then get it in there right, tack it in there and get it straight this time. I cut 45s on, on this with a chop saw, and so I'm going to put an end piece, a cap, on that. See that nice little burr? That's Chop saw is not the best way in the world to cut things sometimes. I'm going to put end caps on these pieces, just out of 1 8 stock, and I'm going to radius the corners using the belt sander. And by the way, this little belt sander doubles as a tungsten sharpener sometimes for me. And this is a mag tab made by Strong Hand Tools. And I'm going to show you some clips here just to show you how handy this little dude is. It's mainly made for, for holding tabs like this while you get a tack weld on them. But it'll hold darn near anything that's small so you don't have to hold it with the other hand and possibly burn your finger or have the piece move while you try to tack it. So a little tab or a lug or a bolt or a washer even a big old ball bearing. This thing will just make things easy to hold while you get a tack weld on something. Now this is a use for it that, that I've found that it's not advertised on the part, but it sure does work good. Putting a little end cap on, on a piece of tubing like this, you can see you can get it lined up. Now you can put gloves on, get a little quick tack on there, not have to hold your finger right next to where you're going to tack, and the part doesn't move while you get a tack on it. Super, super useful little tool. After we get both sides fit up and, and a couple or three tacks on each one, we're going to weld this one out. I'm still using that torch switch uh, just because you don't really need much amperage control on something like this. I think I set this to 105 amps using a 1 16th. That's 1.6 millimeter ER70S6 filler wire. To show you another angle with that. Now what I, what I do here, instead of tacking on the tack, I got a tack inboard and then I backed up to the tack. And the reason for that is if you light up on a tack sometimes, if it's under stress, a lot of times the part will pop open you'll get a little gap and doing the tacking just a little ways inboard from a from a tack kind of prevents that I'm probably going to come over these with a flap disc before this thing is painted so I'm just doing a little quick bead not really worrying too much about the appearance on the uh, outside edges of these and for these ends here instead of flopping the piece down where everything is flat Sometimes it's just easier to weld stuff in position. And it just makes sense here to go downhill on this. Now you can see I am wearing my TIG Finger product here. And it's letting me prop right next to this thing. Fingers don't even get warm. Hold the post flow on there. I'm going, to, I'm going to use another little shot from a previous video just to show you how useful this thing is. Sometimes it's just hard to find a, a place to prop. And you need to prop close to the weld and it gets pretty hot. Just lets you have a steady hand and a steady hand makes a better weld. Alright, this thing is all tack welded up with TIG. Now we're going to MIG weld it out. And I'm set at 18 volts here, 230 inches a minute using 030 wire. That's a little bit cold. It's only eighth of an inch wall tubing but uh, it seemed to work out okay. Now here I'm just tack welding some long runners here because with, without any supports, without this thing being all boxed in, it's definitely going to try to pull in uh, to the side of where each angle is. And so uh, this is just, I'm putting some heavy tacks on these stiffeners here and try to minimize how much it pulls in. So I'm going to weld these from inside to out, try to minimize the distortion because it's going to kind of shrink in the direction of travel. And I'm just using a little forward and back type thing where I pull the arc down into the little V-groove that I have beveled and then back up a little bit and let it fill in. Just, just for kicks, there's about a hundred different ways to do that. 
on these outside corners. I've knocked them down with a grinder a little bit so that they kind of fill in and, and don't just pile up. I'm going to show two different techniques here. This is just a kind of a series of, of views. You can see it's a little bit cold. Again, it's only eighth of an inch wall. It'll be fine. Here I've turned it up a little bit, just going forward and back a little bit. I like that a little bit better. Well, now that it's all welded up, it's time to cut this stiffener loose, this temporary temporary thing, and boom, you see it had a little stress on it. Not unusual at all when you do that much welding on something for it to be in a little bit of a bind. So I'll put a, a little square up here to see what the damage is, and it's off just a little. It drew just a little into the throat, just like I figured it would, but it's a welding cart. It'll be okay. Now here's what I wish I'd have done differently. I think if I'd have put these uh, cross members out there over top of that joint and welded those up first, it would have it would have pulled in a little bit less. Maybe not, but it, since things have a tendency to pull inward on a 90 degree joint like that, anything you can do to prevent it will help. All right, if you want to learn more about that mag tab or a TIG finger, just go to weldmonger.com. That's where my online store is, and here's that little rough sketch with the dimensions of this cart. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hopefully I'll wrap this up in one more video.